Hey, it's Walden from Walden's Automation, and today I have a short little video I want to do for the subtle difference between the return and the exit commands. So I was reviewing a script that somebody did, and he used the exit command in an interesting way I hadn't seen before, and I want to share it with you guys. So first off, we're going to cover return. So if I have this F1 hotkey right here, it's going to send the message box and then call this function and then return. So in this case, what return is going to do is it's going to stop the hotkey. So notice I say this will not be hit because once the return is called under the hotkey, the hotkey is finished. There is no more code to be executed. So in this function, the return is slightly different. It's not the same return. So in this case, return is going to stop the function. You know, also remembering you could like return a number or like a string or something. You could always return variables, but for the purposes of this, it's just stopping the function code. So you can see here that once you return out of the function, this will not be hit. But notice here, things will be hit because the return does not stop the F1 hotkey. Once the return happens, uh, the script will continue on this way. So here's me running the script, F1 activated, and <laughs> Control W does happen to close my tab, but uh, it's all for demonstration. Okay. So if I look at the next segment of code I wrote, this is going to show off the exit case. If you activate F2, it's going to call the message box. And then inside the function, it's going to send control W and then exit. So the difference between this return and this exit is that the exit is going to terminate the current thread. Every hotkey gets its own thread. But if that doesn't even make any sense, the exit is going to stop the current hotkey that it's been called from. So, you know, you can have all kinds of code and functions that are being called everywhere in your hotkey. One exit command is going to kill the current hotkey and stop everything. So notice that I have the message box, the function, and then this will not be hit because once the exit's called, again, it will stop right here. And I guess it goes without saying as well that if I had code over here, this won't be hit either. So let's demonstrate it uh, if I hit F2. Bam, F2 activated, and the script dies. Nothing else is run. There's a lot of ways this could be useful for you, but I just want to show off the way it was used in the script I was reviewing. This guy had a loop going, and it had this big complicated thing, like a big function. And throughout his code, he had these check functions. Check, uh, if, whatever, exit. Basically, you could keep calling your thing, and then at every one of these checks it could exit the entire hotkey and not have to do any special fallbacks. You just know as soon as exit is hit, everything else is hosed. So yeah, I hope you found that useful. If you're interested in me reviewing some scripts of your own, you can go to waldens.world slash lessons and uh, you can schedule a lesson with me. If you like this video and you want to see more automation scripts and tutorials, check out my other videos. See ya.